Let's take a look at a brand new three-minute video from Francis Chan and the organization known as The Send. This particular video from The Send is called Dear Leaders, and I just added the closed captioning so that you could understand exactly what he's saying better. This is essentially a commercial or a promotional video in order to get people to go to a stadium event coming up in May. Although Francis Chan really does appear to be sincere and passionate, he's going to get a lot of things wrong. This is an example of manufactured sincerity, and in tremendous irony, you're going to see a very highly produced video that's supposed to be all about this miraculous move of the Holy Spirit that's just happening spontaneously, yet the whole thing is being manufactured. People are being whipped into a frenzy at these giant stadium events. The last two and a half years have been so crazy and so difficult for every Christian leader because it feels like there have been so many tragic events. And just when you think something's gonna ease up and we'll, we'll have a time or reprieve, something worse happens. And we're just trying to survive this time. Okay, two things I wanna point out. Number one, none of the signs and wonders miracle workers like Todd White and Bill Johnson, and Lou Engel, Mike Bickle, none of them did anything to stop the COVID-19 crisis. They didn't heal anybody. They talked about all the great things that were coming in all of their false prophetic words. And then they just had to suffer through everything like the rest of us when this stuff happened. And the second thing I want to say is that, yeah, this has been bad and all, but take a look at world history. Take a look at maybe World War I or World War II. Take a look at the uh, French Revolution in the uh, late 1700s or in the 1600s. Look at the Thirty Years' War and you'll see tens of millions of people dying and killing each other. It has been much worse in the past than what we've gone through. And I don't say that to diminish the uh, difficulty that people have had, but there should be a better sense of perspective on all of human history in these things. And leading during this time feels impossible because tragedies usually bring people together, but right now it's doing the opposite. It's hard to find anyone who actually has hope about the future of our nation. Now, the SEND is supposed to be a worldwide movement of God doing this miraculous thing to bring people to Christ all over the world. And yet here we see it's kind of about the United States of America and about the socioeconomic condition of the United States of America or the moral condition of America. Now, that's an important issue, but a revival is about people being forgiven of their sin because they realize they need to repent of their sin before a holy God. The condition of the United States really has nothing to do with that. What tends to happen in these modern revivalistic movements is that you're made to feel really afraid and also a bit guilty for the condition of your country. And so you need to do a lot more than you're currently doing in order to fix the problems of your country or your state, your nation. And in reality, that's not the job of a Christian. And people definitely don't look to the church anymore for hope because they hear about all of our scandals and all the problems we're going through. I think it's fair to say that the number one reason why people don't look to the church is because they don't look to God. People are naturally uh, against God in their sinful state. A non-believer doesn't want to believe in God. And that's not the fault of the church. What the church does to make matters much worse is it becomes a parody of itself by making videos like this and having these frantic, gigantic events where people are whipped into a frenzy and made to feel like there is this desperation in the air that's got to be solved immediately. And these things don't last. They actually do a lot more harm than good. But the, the good thing actually is that we've been through this before. Okay, back in the 70s. The guy who started The Send is Lou Engel, and he's talked about this a lot, so I think that's where Francis Chan is getting this. But basically, what he's about to say about the Jesus movement in the 1970s is just totally wrong. But when you say things with a lot of emotion, and of course you have that very strong emotional background music, which in this case sounds like a chord progression taken from a Radiohead song, you get the idea that something really important is happening, when it's really not. There was so much division, moral decay, racism, there was war, but in the middle of all of that, there was actually a movement that swept through the whole country. It was called the Jesus People Movement. 
Okay, this is not a slam against the original Jesus People movement, but it is a wild exaggeration to claim that it swept through the entire country. The movement did change a lot of how evangelical Christianity functioned in uh, the decades that followed. It also created the Christian music industry, but it didn't sweep across the whole country, leading to this glorious change that he's about to describe. And I have to say, when Christian leaders exaggerate or don't even tell the truth at all about something that happened in the past to try to prop themselves up, they lose credibility at the same time that they're telling everybody about how the church doesn't have credibility. And what happened was crowds of people began turning to Jesus. And it wasn't because of some sort of clever marketing or teaching. This is what you call historical revisionism. There was teaching. Of course, how do you have a movement where people become Christians and lives are changed if you're not teaching anything? And of course, there was clever marketing, a lot of it. What's incredible is that Francis Chan is in the middle of speaking on a very clever marketing video while he's telling everybody about the great old days when they didn't used to do any sort of marketing. It was actually a move of God. Okay, here's a chart that shows the historical trends of religion in America going back to the year 1900. If you look at the decade starting in 1970 and ending in 1980, you don't see this gigantic upsurge in Protestant Christianity. There's a tiny little evening out for the last few years of the decade, but there is no gigantic move of the Spirit represented in this chart whatsoever. I was born in 1964, so the 1970s was my childhood and teenage years. And uh, I was there, and what he's describing just isn't accurate. And the thing is, the Jesus movement was kind of the Christian version of the hippie movement, which was this countercultural, young people are better than old people, we don't want to go back to the old days, we got a new way of doing things, and yet here they are, all these decades later, talking about, we got to go back to the good old days. It's very ironic, and it's kind of sad. So right now would be the worst time for any Christian leader to give up, because in Scripture, God often allows situations to get to the point where they look impossible, and then God does the impossible. Here's why this teaching is so dangerous, because it's laying this foundation that whatever has happened in the past is kind of irrelevant. Christ dying on the cross in our place for our sins isn't that important because we need God to do something amazing. We need him to do it very soon because the life and death and resurrection of Christ and the establishment of the church and the gift of eternal life, that's not enough. This is not Christian teaching. This is a really bizarre form of revivalism. And this is why we're begging the leaders in the body of Christ not to lose hope now, but actually to be more courageous than ever. I totally agree that Christians should not lose hope and we should be courageous, but that's always been the case. The early church was flourishing in the midst of the Roman Empire, which was killing them. So no matter what happens in this life, we have peace with God through Christ who died for our sins, and we know where we're going to spend eternity. And no one can take that away, no matter what happens on this earth. Don't even think about quitting. Now's the time to engage, because this could be the time that many of us have been waiting for our whole lives. The reason why people have been waiting for this great revival to come is because people like Francis Chan and Lou Engel and all the leaders at the Send have been telling you about it as if it were right around the corner. But they've been saying this for many decades, and the Bible doesn't say anything about this end times revival. And if God really did want to send this end times revival, he would just do it. He wouldn't need these highly manipulative videos in order to accomplish his will on the earth. To see the Holy Spirit stirring an army of people into evangelism. It's pretty obvious, just watching this video, what they're really describing is this large group dynamics mind control thing that happens with these stadium events. Everyone's all excited about this great thing that's happening, and it's not real. It just isn't. It's manufactured. And missions were calling leaders to a radical consecration to God, holiness, and his word. We're calling them to unity, deep intimacy with Jesus, and to abandon everything that does not bring him glory. 
Okay, the idea of bringing glory to God is wonderful and terrific and biblical, and yet here we see the Christ figure or the Moses figure of Francis Chan climbing the holy mountain and getting close to God, setting the example for all of the world. That's what I see in this video. I really have to wonder if Francis Chan is okay with the way he's being portrayed in this video. Maybe he doesn't really know what it looks like. I don't know. And by the way, what on earth is this floating guy supposed to represent? And with one united voice, we want to come before God Almighty and ask Him, God, can we see your glory? Look into Look my, my eyes, eyes and you and will you see, see the glory. The glory. <clears throat> Sorry. I have to ask, was Francis Chan okay with this? At the very point in the video where they talk about seeing God's glory. Yeah, stick my face in there. That'll be good. Okay, I'm going to keep this video short. I want to encourage you to look at some other videos on this topic. I want you to consider what the Bible says about false Christ, false prophets who show great signs and wonders, who will try to deceive the elect. There is no end times revival in the Bible, but there is an end times falling away where people are getting deceived. Thanks so much for watching this video and listening to what I have to say, and I will leave a bunch of things in the description of this video to give you more information and some more ideas to think about.